Welcome to a brand new walkthrough, Mists of Avalon. This is one of my absolute top faves and I highly recommend to give this one a try for yourself. So let's start this epic adventure. One rainy afternoon at Croft Manor. So we start off in the home level, but we will be moving on away from the home level. It's not all inside the manor. Okay, and straight away we get a little pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner. So one of them said notes and one said research. So that's the PDA that's in the inventory. So the research is just general history of Avalon and the King Arthur legend. And then the notes is something that you'll come to a little more often. So it tells us about new moves that we have in this game, so that's cool. So I'll actually just explain the moves as I get to them. So I think that's all no. for now, yeah, okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do, because we're actually locked inside the gym, but first, <laughs> firstly, I'm gonna come this way and pick up my personal light source. So that acts as an infinite supply of flares. This is like the light from Tomb Raider Legend. Uh -huh. And we go. So that we've got another notes thing, but that's just explaining the uh, personal light source. Um, yep. So as I've said, we are locked inside the gym. We need to find five buttons that will open up that circular underwater gate just there in the pool. So we need to push this short block all the way forward to the wall firstly. Okay and then over to this column. And then climb on up. So this is where one of our new moves comes into play. So as you're hanging from a ledge like this, just press the jump button and she'll vault up to the level above. Okay, so once you've shimmied as far left as you can, you can vault up again and then climb up to here. And now we're going to jump to this slope. So at the end of the slope, you can jump off to the column ahead and just grab that. So try and make sure you are at the end. Okay, and from here we can go left or right. So I'm going to choose to go left. I think it just minimizes a bit of wandering around, saves you a bit of time. And here is button number one. Okay, grab the ledge again, back the way we came, and we're gonna go to the right. Okay, so keep going around. Vault on up, and into this little cubby. And here's button number two. Cool beans. Okay, so before we move away from this cubby, we can actually, uh, that's a slope right in front of me. We can use this to grab the poles, but it's a little tricky because you have to try and be at the very end of the slopes to grab the poles. So yeah, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna save. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a good job I saved. I meant to do a running jump. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, at the end, just grab the pole and then same again. Okay, 
There we go, and then over to this ladder section. Now, before you press the down button while you're on the ladder, you want to make sure Lara has her footing, because there's a new move that just makes her jump off backwards, and from this height, she'll go crunch. So we don't really want that to happen. It's already happened once. We don't want it to happen again. So that was button number three. Okay, two more to go. So again, back to this short bench, up to here, and this time we can come around to the right hand side of this column. From here just vault up higher, and now we have yet another new move. So as you're hanging off, same situation I mentioned at that ladder, just press the down button and Lara will jump off backwards and we can grab this. This is also another place I like to save. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this vertical pole in front of me so that I can grab the horizontal pole ahead of me. Okay, so preferably you want to jump and grab. She doesn't always do this as successfully as you want her to. There we go. So try and be as level as possible with the pole. So the reason I tend to jump up like I did instead of just grabbing it from a standing position is because then you're lined up just to shimmy up one more space and now you're in the correct position position so go ahead and jump off nice and another new move is what we're going to use to get to the sloped section ahead of me so as you're hanging from a pole press the jump button okay so she climbs and jumps off and you'll want to veer a bit so that you can slide backwards so that you can grab this so drop down one space and we can grab this metal bar on the wall. Okay, and vault on up. And I'm just coming into this space for some ammo. There's some desert ranger clips. Aha, aha, cool beans. So again, I'm gonna come back and just hang from this ledge. Shimmy to the right hand section, right hand tile space, and this is a bit of a leap of faith. You want to press the down button so she jumps off backwards. Okay, good. We'll grab this pole and then just jump off to here and we can see yet another button. Awesome stuff, one more left and it's a pretty easy button. So it doesn't matter what order you press any of the buttons in. So I'm just gonna line myself up so that I can quickly and safely land on down in the pool. So the last button is pretty easy peasy. So just run on over to this column, this laddered column. Okay, and at the top we need to shimmy around to the right but there's no ladder section so you need to let go quick and grab and then shimmy so Lara does not have her footing. Alrighty, there we go. Nice. So swim on in, there is only one item that we can collect here, and that's the gymnasium key. So now we can leave the gym. <laughs> 
Also, you may have noticed the shield item through that window. That's actually a secret. We can't get it from this section, but we will be getting it, don't you worry. All secrets must be found. Nice. So heading into the main mana section, before we get over to there, there's a med pack hidden, hidden in these plants and also some shotgun shells over in this corner. Uh -huh. Okie dokie, so on this pedestal is a note. Didn't mean to hop back. <laughs> uh -huh. So we see that in the corner and I, if I wait a moment that also comes up with the PDA notes. So that's where that note is stored. It's in our PDA. So let's take a look. So, good afternoon, Lara. There's fresh orange juice in the kitchen, which will make a tasty smoothie when combined with some other fruits. When going for a swim, remember that north and south are safe today. Yours truly, Winston. P.S. The red code is the day and month of your birthday in case you need it. So this is actually full of hints. If you're struggling to know what to do with something, you're better off like referring to this. Maybe this will help. So yeah, something about a smoothie, that's something we're going to do. North and south when swimming. Mm, don't know what it means yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out when we get there. And then the red code, I can g scroll again. Code for the keypad in the secret room underneath the main hall. So yeah, this, we already know the combination. So most Tomb Raider fans will know that Lara's birthday is the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. So we have a code for a keypad already, so we'll have to figure out which one it's for when we get there. So it's implied that that is for a secret. Okay, from here there's a door to my right and one to my left as well, and the door ahead of me needs a key, so we're working on finding the key now. Doesn't matter which way you go first, I'll just go ahead and come this way. I think this way minimizes a bit of backtracking. Just you know, saves you going backwards and forwards so much. Uh, so here is the kitchen. There is another doorway in there as well that if you come around, it leads around to this doorway. So I'm trying just to let you get your bearings because the manor can be very confusing. So in the kitchen, we have a uh -huh. med pack just on the countertop and we can pick up this banana. Uh -huh. So it mentioned smoothies and fruits and stuff and this is where we're gonna make our smoothie so we've not got enough ingredients just yet so I'll take the long way around and show you what else we've got so we've got the pool room here as well I'll not explore that just yet though I'll leave that until the end so returning back to where we entered let's go across to this right hand wing Okay, in the dining room here, there's some desert ranger ammo. Aha. And we can even pick up one of these bottles. Aha. Okay, so I can come to the right hand side, but I'll just come back this way simply because there's some shotgun shells over in this corner over here. Uh -huh. Okay, so on my right we'll pass that doorway that I just pointed out that I ignored. And here we're entering the Arboretum or Botanical Garden. Okay, and you see the coconuts that just fell from the tree? You don't want to rush and stand under that tree as they're falling because they will hit you on the head something fierce. They'll take a lot of health off you. So I've come in here simply to find a coconut but the only one I can pick up is this one. So this is directly opposite the door I entered. So I'll not do any puzzles in this room just yet. I only came for the coconut. I'll come back here once I've made my smoothie. You know also while I'm here just 
step in some shallow water. There's also shallow water in that room as well. But I'm gonna fill up this empty bottle. Okay. So heading back to the kitchen so that we can make our smoothie now. Right, so combine the coconut with the banana and use it on the smoothie maker. Awesome stuff. So we now have that smoothie in our inventory and you want to be careful if you accidentally use it, if you're not close enough to where you need to be using the smoothie and it doesn't work and you just spill it all over the floor, be aware that you probably want to save your game before using it because if you lose your smoothies and there's no more coconut or banana to pick up to make another one. So it won't necessarily happen but there was a note in the readme about it and it didn't happen to me when I was messing about as well. <laughs> I didn't understand the situation and I messed up. Okay, so now back to the botanical garden. We have two switches, one here and one behind me, that I can pull. Okay, that has raised that section so I can reach a higher column. Okay, well, not a column, but this platform. And hop into here and pull this lever. Oh, poor fishy, it got squished. Okay, so I now have some ladders so that I can reach the balcony on each side. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Whoops, yeah that tree is kind of in the way. Hi fish. Yeah, okay, so it is on this side. We have some shotgun shells. Aha. Okay, and here is where we're going to use the water. So the balcony across from me, that's where we actually use the smoothie in the, um, the bowl over there. So there is a hint of which one to use. This particular basin has blue lines and the one opposite has orange lines and also has fruit around the base so that's a good hint not all that obvious unless you see the fruit first but it's a nice hint I quite like it so let me actually save my game in case I just spill it everything everywhere Okay, and now I'm going to go to the opposite side and use the smoothie in that basin. Nice. So we heard something happen before I go and do that. Let's just. There is a med pack here. Sometimes uh -huh. she struggles to pick this up, so just crouch down if she's struggling. Okay. So what using the uh, the water and the smoothie did 
was create a platform on either side here so that we can reach this balcony over here. And we have a uh -huh. bit of key, the headpiece of a key. So that's a bit of key. We need to find the other half now. We're going to combine the key pieces so that we can use the full key on that other door. So now I'm completely done in the Arboretum and I'm going to go to where I've not yet been, which is the pool room. Okay, first thing you want to do is locate a lever which is hidden behind this plant. Okay, what that did was open this underwater hatch just here. So you can swim straight on down, grab a med pack, and before I do the um, the main puzzle, I'm going to grab a secret and it's actually the one that we saw in the gym. So we can open this manually, which isn't obvious because the first one we came across had to be opened by pressing those buttons. Okay, nice. Here we go. We have a shield. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's swim to the middle section. We can see that we have four levers. So let me just go to the inventory while I explain this so that I don't drown. So the ones to pull, if you pull the wrong one, you can see the, the little spheres, little dots around there. Those are spike traps actually, so if you pull the wrong one, you're gonna die. So remember the note that was left for us when taking a swim, north and south are safe today. So I am currently facing west. So this is not safe. So this one will be safe, plus the one opposite. Okie dokie, we have more platforms. Okay, so to reach the black platforms, we can pull out this fish statue. It's got a, a flat top so we can stand on it. Um, I'm going to head up to each balcony, so better off doing this left hand balcony first oops it doesn't matter which order you do it in really but you're better doing this one first sometimes she doesn't grab the poles either I think you have to grab them a little more in the center okay pull the chain and now do exactly the same on the other side Okay, so we now have this hanging basket to help us get across that next balcony section. And the reason I said to do this side second is because we have this diving board to help us get across to the hanging basket. Okay, and we have another piece of the key here. 
So now we have both pieces. We're actually completely done in this section of the house. Try not to <laughs> swim down there. Don't need to anymore. Okay, now we can use the key and move on to the next section of the manor. find something else to hold water in. Okay, so we no longer have the glass bottle in our inventory and there was a hint that we are going to need to find something else to hold water in, so that's something we're going to be doing. Also don't step on the glass bottle because it hurts Lara's bare feet. You'll actually lose health. From here we have a door left and right. Pick a side, doesn't matter, they both lead out to the same area. Okay, and here we are in the main hall of Croft Manor. So the other door would lead from the uh, the corner at the bottom of the stairs there, the other side of the fireplace. And first thing I'm going to do, let's go and talk to Zip in the tech room. Good afternoon, Zip. Hey, Lara. Alistair's in the library, doing some research on the Stone of Omphalus, like you requested. Good. Okay. So the main thing we're actually doing now, we need to find four books. It's very important that you find four books and read them. And then that will allow the story to move on. Avalon became an increasingly powerful and spiritual place over the course of many years. Its priests and priestesses lived according to the laws of nature and by the movements of the sun and moon. Okay, so we get a little bit of a history in these books and the information actually gets stored in the PDA research. So that was book one. Also what I'm gonna do, I kinda forgot to do this. I also <laughs> forgot to mention all the things you can see that you can interact with. So we have a number pad just here, but this one has more of a, a gray square below the numbers. So this is not the red number pad that was mentioned in our notes for the secret. So the birthday code will not work here. Also not a very, well, not much of a hint right now, but later on it will become a hint because this has a post-it note. This PC next to me on the left has a post-it note that says security cameras, but right now it's pretty insignificant. Ahead of me is a door that requires a key and there is an important item that I can pick up from this cabinet. So this is a valve wheel. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this straight away. So there is another door that requires a key, but we actually already have that key. Also, let me point out that door over there we will not use that door. <laughs> That's not a door, really, so just ignore that. Okay, so the general mana key that we combined and used a moment ago is still in our inventory, and we can use it right here. Okay, so just in this smaller section, there's a door left with two keyholes, but actually it's just one key we need on both keyholes. And also there's this section we're heading to right now. Okay, just come on down into the cellar. And we can see a bucket, but we can't get that because of the steam. The steam will do damage. So this is where we're going to use the valve wheel. Okay, that's turned off the steam and we can pick up the bucket. So this is what we're going to be holding water in when the time comes. 
We also do not yet have our pistols, but we'll be finding them soon. And when we do, we can actually come back to this room and shoot a couple of boxes for some extra pickup items. So now I'm going to head upstairs. So on the right hand side, we can't go through any of those doors just yet. They are all closed off without keyholes. You can't open them. This room has a keyhole that looks like an owl. So that's a bit of a hint because the key might look the same, perhaps. <laughs> okay, so here is another book we need to read. Morgane, also known as Morgan Le Fay, was Lady of the Lake the High Priestess of Avalon, during King Arthur's reign. She was also Arthur's half-sister. It was Morgaine who made for him the sheath of his legendary sword, Excalibur. And she is the mother of his son, Gwydion. Okay, so that's a crazy family situation, but we'll not question it. It was okay back then. Okay, so come on through this way, and we have a third book to read. Sometime during King Arthur's reign, Avalon started to become isolated in time and space, lost to the rest of the world. Only the priestesses and priests of Avalon could reach it with a small boat, bidding the mists surrounding Avalon to yield to their will. Okay, this room has a post-it note that says I'm in the library. Alistair. Now this is our second hint that Alistair is in the library, so we will be looking for Alistair later on. Just gotta find where the library is. Okay, in this music room there's some Desert Ranger al ammo in the corner. Aha. Okay, through to here, we're actually just going to look for the fourth book now. And look at this. How cool is this? I need one of these. I need a room to put it in though. Just build an extra room to the house. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So the book we're looking for is right here. It is believed that a map to the location of Avalon is hidden in King Arthur's tomb. <sighs> but how can that be? According to some versions of the King Arthur legend, his body was buried on Avalon. It's time to finally explore those ruins underneath the crypt. My father believed the ruins played an important part in the King Arthur legend, so I might find some clues there. I think Zip knows where the key to the crypt is. Okay, so Lara dropped the hint of Zip might know where the key to the crypt is. So that's our trigger to go back and talk to Zip. So we also did see him while Lara was speaking as well. So that's all ready for us to move on back to Zip. But before I do, we can grab a secret. So we have the notes come up just in the corner there. And this keypad has a post-it on it that says Fourth Rock from the Sun. So that would be Mars. But how do we put Mars into a number pad? Well, let's check our notes. Here we go. So it's given us a cipher. M is 5, A is 1, R is 6, and S is 7. So that's our code, 5167. Okay, so as you can see, the number pad is cut off my screen. So in the README, it does state the resolution that the game was created and tested in. So clearly that's not the same resolution that I'm using, but you can easily put the code in. You just got to find what you're highlighted on and you can easily figure out the numbers from there. So I believe my resolution is always uh, 1280 by 720. No point changing it for one game. It's not a game breaker, not being able to see the numbers. It's fine. So what was the code? Five, one, is it seven, six? Six, seven, I can't remember now. We'll find out. 
Aha, there we go. So deciphering the code has given us a secret shrine, which is our second secret. And all that's inside this room is this button. So that's opened up another secret room that's in the main hall. So I'm heading there anyway, I'm gonna go talk to Zip, but we can also head down and grab another secret on the way. Okay, so just drop straight on down and this will close up once we slide down. So we're currently trapped in here. Okay, running jump just to grab the monkey bars so you don't want to fall down in the lasers. Those are instant death. Okay, run and jump, grabbing the air to slide all into the gap. And the notes have come up. This is a note we already have, so it's just reminding us what the code is to this red number pad. You see, it's got a red square underneath the numbers. So this is the one that wants Laura's birthday. So the 14th of February. One, four, zero, two. Nice. So that's turned off the lasers and it's also opened up the way out so we can leave, but don't leave without your secret. So you just saw it ahead of me just there before I dropped into the water. So time the spikes, there we go. I tend to turn to the right to save me overshooting and then putting myself in the path of those spikes. Quick detour behind the railings just for a med pack. Nice, and then climb on out and grab our third secret. Aha! So after picking that up, these spikes have deactivated. Beans, so let's get out of here. Okay, so now let's see what Zip has to say. <sighs> Any idea where Winston might have hidden the crypt key? I do, but I'm not telling you. I'll just have to find it myself then. Be prepared for some nice new surprises. Sounds like fun. By the way, your bedroom key? It's in the safe behind me there. Thanks. Awesome, so talking to Zip again has allowed us to acquire Lara's bedroom key. So if you're not sure which room is Lara's bedroom, well, this key has an owl on it. Okay, also watch the hole in the floor, that does not close up. <laughs> okay, so here's Lara's bedroom. Or at least the passage that leads to her bedroom anyway. In we come. First I'm just gonna head into the left hand door. Doesn't matter which room you go to first. You will have to go into both rooms. Into here. Okay and where it looks like there's a set of drawers, we can open these up and grab an item. Okay, there is another one. This one will have a med pack. And 
And before leaving, you just want to pull this little lever here. You can come into this room and grab a very important item from these drawers. We have found our trusty pistols. Oh yeah. So if you don't find the pistols here and if you don't find the other weapon that's available in this mana section before moving on to the part where there will be enemies, you kind of will be in a spot of bother because, well, if you miss them, that's it. <laughs> so you will need to find a weapon in the mana. Okay, so next puzzle, we actually need to find a plug so we can fill the bucket from the shower. So this is not an obvious puzzle. So you need to come into here and take the plug from the sink. Aha. And then go ahead and put it in the shower. Okay, so the notes have just come up in the corner there. That's just going to let us know that this is a good place to get some water. Alrighty, so now we can leave the bedroom area and we'll have so much more to do in the manor section. This is where I'm going to leave it for today, but there is much more to be done. Nice. So I hope you're enjoying this so far. So I hope to see you next time. Take it easy, guys and girls.